Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poland Daily History. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee, and today we are at the Warsaw Royal Castle, located in the castle square within the Warsaw Old Town. It is a historical structure that houses royalties throughout the dynasties and has been with Poland through thick and thin. We will be talking with a historian that specializes in the history of the Warsaw Castle, and we will be exploring the different facades of the magnificent structure. So join us, and let's go on a journey. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the Castle Square overlooking the Warsaw Royal Castle with the historian Anna Czekaj, an expert in all things Warsaw Royal Castle. And I was hoping to talk a little bit today about the downfall actually of the Polish Empire and what are the results of the downfall with its uh, influence on the Royal Castle. Trzeci rozbiór Polski z 1795 roku położył kres polskiej państwowości. The third partition of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, which took place in 1795, put an end to the idea of Polish statehood. That was also the end for the role that the royal castle played since the Union of Lublin in the 16th century. Poland ceased to exist. In January 1795, King Stanisław Augustus abdicated. The same also no longer existed. The royal castle lost its royal function. Initially, it went into the hands of the Prussian authorities. The Prussian governors worked here until the establishment of the Duchy of Warsaw. And during this time, they did what they were doing for the entirety of the period of partitions, namely exploiting our country as much as possible. During the Prussian rule over the castle, it was raided, not say robbed, of a large part of the endowment, which was left after the abdication of Stanisław Augustus in January of 1795. The castle went through a short period of rebirth during the period of the Duchy of Warsaw. The rebuilding of the Polish statehood was possible under the protectorate of Napoleon Bonaparte. The castle was then used as the residence of the king. Well, in fact, the Duke of Warsaw, since we did not have a kingdom but the Duchy of Warsaw, with its capital in Warsaw. Frederick Augustus of Saxony became the Duke of Warsaw, who was expected to become the King of Poland in accordance with the agreements of the May 3rd Constitution. After the Duchy of Warsaw period and the reign of Frederick Augustus, the castle became once more, surprisingly, the quarters of the Polish king. However, according to the directives given at the Congress of Vienna, the King of Poland was the title given to the Russian Tsar Alexander I. The name Kingdom of Poland remained in place, however it was connected via personal union with Tsarist Russia. The royal castle was the residence of the Russian Tsars until the November uprising, when in 1831, in the castle halls, where the constitution had been adopted, Tsar Nicholas I was dethroned. After the fall of the uprising, in retaliation against this act of dethroning the Tsar, the royal castle was repressed by the Russian authorities. Overall, Warsaw was reduced to the role of a small provincial state city. The castle became the residence of the Tsar's governors. Meanwhile, the castle's interiors, that witnessed the events such as the aforementioned dethroning of the Tsar, were destroyed or rebuilt. For a short period, there were military barracks located on the premises, same as the ones that were priorly located beneath the castle, seen from the Vistula River. The castle shared the same fate as the Polish state, meaning it was reduced to a subordinate function, completely unimportant and located far from the center of Russian statehood. The royal castle was slowly decaying right until the outbreak of World War I, when along with the changes of the front line, its ownership would change between the Russians and the Germans. 
Finally, in November 1918, Warsaw was liberated as the First World War drew to a close. Marshal Józef Piłsudski came to Warsaw, the creator of the Polish legions, later chief of state. The date of his arrival, November 11th, became the symbolic date used to position the date of Poland regaining independence. And with that independence, the royal castle gained new functions. The way the castle square looks today is the result of the Tsarist period, the times of partitions. Initially, during the reign of the Jagiellonian and Vasa dynasties, this entire area was enclosed within walls. The gate that would lead us to old Warsaw and the castle was demolished by the subsequent Tsars. They destroyed the entire construction of the square, creating what we know and see now. The square was the auditorium of many dramatic events of our history. The event that echoed across the world were the anti tsarist demonstrations that took place right before the outbreak of the January uprising in 1863. Those events occurred right in front of the facet of the royal castle. In the year 1918, Poland finally regained its independence. It's like a very historical event for Poland. And I was wondering what happened during that time. What are the events that took place in this castle in the process of regaining its independence and the events that happened afterwards? On November 11, 1918, a Polish flag was placed on the castle tower as a symbol of regaining of independence as well as a symbol of the castle being returned to the Polish nation. We must remember that 1918 did not put an end to the disputes of our independence as well as the shape of our country's borders. Various military conflicts, such as the war against Bolsheviks, lasted until the beginning of the 1920s. So in this initial period after Poland regained independence, the royal castle had to wait for better times. Those times came in the 1920s. The authorities of the Republic of Poland took care of the royal castle and the preservation of the castle began. For instance, the importations brought there by the partitioning forces were taken out, especially the transformed facet. However, the castle was in need of changes not just in the architectural sense, but also multiplied technical repair. It was in a really bad shape, and so in order for it to be able to perform any representative function, the renovations were taking place. Notably, the roofs were modernized. Historic roof structures were removed and replaced with reinforced concrete. What is more, fire-resistant ceilings were put in place, a fact that would become crucial for the fate of the royal castle later in 1939. The castle was renovated and due to the fact it was incorporated into the list of a number of state residences. It was formerly the residence of the chief of state, however Józef Piłsudski preferred to reside in the Belvedere Palace. Józef Piłsudski was a socialist, he was a founding member of the Polish Socialist Party, and so he did not particularly want to reside in the royal castle. The second president of the Polish Republic, Stanisław Wojciechowski, only worked in the royal castle. He also lived in the Belvedere Palace near the Łazienki Park. However, the castle was the place where the presidential offices were located, the civilian chancellery, military chancellery, various ministerial offices, etc. Business apartments were also implemented into the royal castle. For instance, for a short period of time in 1925, a famous Polish writer, Stanisław Żeromski, lived there, while Stanisław Przybyszewski lived in the tin-roofed palace. With the May coup in 1926, when the army led by Józef Piłsudski overthrew the government of President Stanisław Wojciechowski and Prime Minister Vincente Vitos. From 1926, the new president Ignacy Moszczycki lived in the castle. He would entertain his guests here and fulfill all of his presidential duties. The royal castle fully became the residency of the president of Poland, a representative area. There was no longer a place for the parliament in the castle. 
the parliament was given separate facilities in this place where it stands till this day, on Vieska Street. Nevertheless, the castle became the representative place for all the president's functions. This is where the official delegations would arrive at, ambassadors, heads of state. Here is where the president would organize his famous New Year's parties for the diplomatic corps. Finally, here is where the April Constitution of Poland 1935 was signed and where Edward Szmigwiritz was given the marshal's mace. The royal castle flourished in the interwar period. It grows into the conscience of Poles as a symbol of power and sovereignty of state. And it is that symbol that Adolf Hitler attacked in September 1939. <laughs> Symbol uderza w 1939 roku Adolf Hitler. Mm -hmm. 1939, when World War II broke out, it signifies the end of the Second Polish Republic. But it also is a very devastating event for the castle we're looking at. And can you tell me a little bit about the destruction and what came about to the castle? German troops got to Warsaw very quickly, and the siege of the city began. We know that Hitler personally coordinated airstrikes on Warsaw on September 17, 1939. This day was the most tragic for our castle. On this day, bombs hit the clock tower as it caught fire and stopped. That day, many other areas of the castle were destroyed. Many people, along with the custodian of the royal castle, Kazimierz Brock, were killed. The director of the National Museum, Stanisław Lorenz, managed to preserve as much historic substance from the castle as they could. The most valuable items were packed, transported out and hidden beneath the National Museum. Fortunately, they survived the war. Many of those often unnamed heroes lost their lives, saving the historical prizes of the castle. The royal castle caught fire in 1939, but it was left in a rather good condition. Partly because, as I mentioned before, it was renovated during the interwar period when the fire-resistant roofs were put in place. Finally, the Germans blew up the castle during and after the Warsaw Uprising in 1944. 